Hello everyone and welcome to Circle Myth. In today's video, we'll talk about the Divine Comedy depiction of the Nine Circles of Hell. Now let's begin. The Divine Comedy, an epic poem by Italian poet Dante Alighieri from the 14th century, is divided into three sections, the Inferno, the Purgatorio, and the Paradiso. The main character, Dante, gets lost while traveling through the afterlife realms of Hell, Purgatory, and Heaven which serve as a reflection on human sin, mortality, and redemption. Roman poet Virgil says by Dante's beloved Beatrice leads him through purgatory in a dark forest that represents spiritual confusion. Beatrice also guides him through heaven. The story examines the various punishments and rewards soul receives in Inferno based on their action on earth and spiritual developments in the nine circles of hell. Dante and Virgil's journey through each circle represents a different category of sin, with punishments corresponding to the seriousness of the sins committed. Dante comes across as mythological and historical personas who use their narrative to explore themes of divine justice and their repercussions of human behavior. Purgatorio, the poem's second section, takes place on Mount Purgatory, a mountain with seven traces that symbolizes the seven deadly sins. As souls ascend the mountain, they are purified through penitence and spiritual development. Last but not least, Paradiso depicts Dante's ascent through the celestial sphere of heaven. Dante's journey through purgatory serves as a metaphor for the process of overcoming sin and embracing virtue. The journey culminates in a vision of God, emphasizing the ultimate goal of spiritual enlightenment and union with the divine. Dante is led on his journey by Beatrice, who comes in contact with a number of saints and theologians who are exploring the nature of divine love and wisdom. Written in the common Italian of Dante's time, comedy is a complex work that combines theology, philosophy, and political commentary. It was groundbreaking for its use of language and had a significant impact on the development of Italian literature thanks to the poem's vivid imagery, compiling plots, and profound themes. We will spend the remainder of the video going over the nine circles of hell, one at a time, the least severe, and concluding with the lowest, a realm of ice devoid of God's grace, where Satan is imprisoned in a frozen lake. Exploration of the human condition has ensured its lasting impact and enduring legacy as a cornerstone of Western literature. Virtuous pagans and unbaptized souls who lived morally upright lives were not saved because they lacked faith a households in the first circle of limbo. Aristotle's, Socrates, Homer, and legendary figures and heroes like Julius Caesar and Hector of Troy are among the notable residents of a castle surrounded by beautiful landscapes, but they are denied heaven and the full presence of God. Limbo represents the results of living without divine guidance and the limitations of human reason without faith, and the second circle punishes those who indulge in lust. They are madly and turbulently tossed about by violent stormy winds. The rare winds symbolizes how lustful people are swept away by their passion in life, causing them to disregard reasons and virtue. The portrait slush in the third circle of Gluttony represents the cold, numbing, and empty nature of excessive consumption of food and drinks. The Glutonious souls there wallow in the foul portrait slush and are tortured by the monstrous three headed dogs, Cyprus, and its ravenous. The circle punishments reflect the idea that excessive consumption weakens the human spirits and prevents the people from pursuing higher morals and spiritual goals. The appetites represent the constant hunger that afflicts the glutonious. Greed Those who are consumed by greed, whether through hoarding or wasting wealth, belong in the first circle. Two factions of souls in this circle are engaged in constant conflicts while young in heavy objects, the material is symbolized by the clash of weights, conflicts and desire that defines the lives of the greedy. The never-ending struggle stands for the pointlessness of prioritizing material things over moral principles. In the fixed circle of wrath, angry spirits are imprisoned in the murky water of the river stick and are constantly waging war against one another. The souls submerged beneath the water's surface represent those who silently nurture their wrath, leading to a corrosive environment of darkness and suffocation. The murky, 
oppressive environments representing the blinding, destructive nature of anger, how it affects their souls. This punishment shows that unchecked rage not only causes harm to others but also defiles the person's spiritual health. Heresy The Sixth Circle punishes heretics who denied or distorted fundamental Christian doctrines. They are imprisoned in a flaming grave that symbolizes their eternal separation from God and the light of divine truth as well as the spiritual harm and darkness that their heresy caused. The penalty highlights its significance and the consequences of rejecting divine wisdom. Violence Three rings make up the seventh circle, which penalizes various forms of violence. Those who are violent towards others are punished by their outer ring. Centaurs patrol the river and fire arrows at those trying to flee the punishment, symbolizing the destructive and consuming nature of violence. The sinners are immersed in a river of boiling blood called flag, the depth of which is determined by the severity of their sins. The mini ring penalizes offenders who committed violence against themselves, particularly suicides. These souls are transformed into gnarled, thorny trees, which are continuously torn apart and fed upon by harpies, mythological creatures with the body of a bird and the face of a woman. The violent and painful transformation into trees represents the sinner's rejection of their own human form and their inability to participate in the natural order of life. In addition, the harpist attack symbolizes the perpetual suffering and self-inflicted harm of those who committed acts of self-harm, particularly suicide. These souls are charged in two gnarled thorny trees, the harpies, mystical beings with a bird body and a woman's face, constantly tear apart and freak it on. The sinner's painful and foul transformation into a tree symbolizes their rejection of their own human form and their inability to interact with the natural order of life. In addition, the harpist attack stands for their unrelated suffering and their self-inflicted harm. This is the repercussion of disobeying divine and natural order. The harm usually causes to society and aid fraud. The first stage of the eighth circle, known as Malaboja, contains seducers and panderers being wiped by demons as they march in opposite direction as the representation of their manipulation and exploitation of other desires for their own gain. The second ditch is a pit of excrement where flatterers are submerged, symbolizing the filth and insincerity of their false praise and simoniacs who sold ecclesiastical positions and indulgence are thrown headfirst into small fire-filled upside wheels in the third ditch and their depiction of spiritual authority is reflected in the first ditch. In the fifth ditch, corrupt politician narrators are submerged in boiling pitch, symbolizing the sticky and corrupt sorcerers, astrologers, and false prophets who have their heads turned backwards on their body, forcing them to walk backwards. This is the nature of their interaction, and if they try to flee in the sixth ditch, they must tear them apart. Thieves are tormented by snakes and reptiles that constantly bite them and transform them, symbolizing the thief violation of property rights and their own unstable nature in the seventh ditch. Hypocrites who wear gilded lead crooks that look beautiful but crushes the wearer to illustrate the weight of their deceit and superficial appearance. In the eighth ditch, fraudulent advisors like UCCs are enclosed in individual lead casings. In the ninth ditch, there were columns of flames that symbolized their raging desire of tricks and manipulating people of their own gain. In the tenth ditch, a sword-wielding demon dismembers and mutilates souls of discord and scandals, symbolizing the strife and division they brought about in life. False fires, including forgers, impersonators, and counterfeiters, suffer from furious illness and affliction, signifying the corruption and decay they spread through their dishonesty. The ninth and final circle of hell is designated for those who have committed the most serious sin, betraying trust in family, country, guests, or benefactors. This barren realm is characterized by a vast frozen lake known as the Colsius, within which the soul of the damned have been imprisoned for all eternity. The depth of their icy imprisonment reflects the severity of their treachery. The first region is reserved for those who have betrayed their family members. Their souls are frozen in ice 
or to their neck, making them mobile and silent, reflecting their cold and heartless actions towards their kin. Antonia, those who have betrayed their nations or political parties, are kept in the second region, where they are encased in ice up to their heads, while their face exposed to the piercing wind as a representation of their eternal suffering. And Colombia, the third region, punishes those who have betrayed their guests or hosts. These sinners lie supine on the ice while their faces are visible. Their tears filled eyes are frozen shut, symbolizing their cruelty and coldness of their betrayal. Judicial, the fourth and last region, is designated for those who have betrayed their master or benefactors. Those souls are completely enclosed in ice and their bodies are twisted and deformed to symbolize the preservation of loyalty and trust committed at the time of your betrayal. The next video talks about Abaddon, the demon of death. Watch the video now. Thank you.